All righty. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're here celebrating California's biodiversity. And we're actually going to wait a minute or two just to let everybody get on before we get started and underway. We'll be starting with Rosie's fun talk um, and story time. She's going to read a couple books for us. Um, but right now, I just want to tell you a little bit about California Biodiversity Day. We're really excited to be celebrating with you. Um, it's actually a whole week celebration of California Biodiversity Day because there's too much biodiversity to just pack into one day here. We're so lucky we have so much. Um, and what California Biodiversity Day is celebrating is actually all the amazing plants and animals that we have here in California. We're an extremely biodiverse state and we're very lucky to be. But what is biodiversity, right? Because that's a little bit confusing. That's a big word uh, people throw around and don't necessarily divide, de, um, <laughs> define for us. So California's biodiversity and any biodiversity is really just referring to the variety of living things in an area. They can be teeny tiny things that we can't see even inside our bodies as, as genes. Um, or they can be really, really big things, including whole environments and habitats that, that we can refer to as biodiversity. So what we're saying is basically all the different living things in an area. That's what we mean when we mean biodiversity. So this week we're celebrating all the living things in California, which is a ton, as I think you guys know. Um, and the celebration goes from, well, now through Sunday. So you can join us all week. Um, we'll have things up on our blog. We'll be sharing social media. You can also check out the California Department of Fish and Games website as they're the main planners for this whole week of activities. Um, and we're going to be sharing those links in the comments section. So you can go ahead and, and check those out after our presentation here. You can also um, join us, follow us on Facebook. We'll be posting videos throughout the week celebrating California's biodiversity. We are at San Diego Natural History Museum on Facebook, which you should know considering you're on it. But we also have Instagram, we're at SDNHM. Twitter, we're at SDNHM. And then we also like the hashtag the net if you do want to tag us in things. And so what are we doing today? Um, today we're going to have a story time with Miss Rosie starting soon. We're going to have animal movements at 1030 to 11 with Miss Emma. At 11 to 1130 we're going to build an insect home with Miss Ashton. And then now through Sunday you can upload your nature photos to iNaturalist. And at the end of this um, I'll tell you a little bit more about what iNaturalist is if you're not familiar with it. But it's basically a fun app um, and it's the social media and community science app where you can share pictures of wildlife. Right now, I'd also like to just send out thoughts of healing and safety to um, our firefighters out there and everybody that's affected by the blaze. We want you guys to be safe and healthy. So right now, I would like to turn it over to Miss Rosie. Um, we want you guys to find a, a comfy spot for story time. And Miss Rosie is actually going to be sharing her favorite animals with us and her favorite plant that we can find in California. So good morning, Miss Rosie. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm great. It's a beautiful day. I am a little worried like you about the fires and I wish everybody the best um, dealing with the fires out in East County today. So. Um, but yeah, the, the, my favorite plant that is in San Diego County is the laurel sumac. And that's, um, I like it. It's one of those a little fire resistant. It has this waxy coating on its leaves and really deep roots. Um, and I know that it's always a laurel sumac because the leaf looks like a little taco shell. It's really cute. Um, so take a look for Laurel Sumac if you're out there. And then my favorite animal in San Diego is bats. And there's a picture, you found a great picture of the pallid bat for me. Um, bats are awesome. Um, the bats that live in San Diego County, they help keep all those insects in control, right? We don't, bats keep, can seem kind of scary, but really they're really one of the most helpful, one of the most helpful animals that we have. They help pollinate things. They help keep insects under control. And 
they're basically just a flying mammal, which is amazing. That's, the, I think that's really the only flying mammal, right? So really fun yeah. to talk about bats. So anyway, um, so I have a couple stories for everybody today about biodiversity. Um, there's biodiversity everywhere around us. And the stories that I have are gonna illustrate that a little bit for you today. And I hope you enjoy them. The first book that I have for you is called Tiny Perfect Things. And this book is written by M.H. Clark and illustrated by Madeline Clopper. I love the illustrations are they just really full of color. They look, look really fun. Um, Lots of different biodiversity in this book. I hope you enjoy it. Today, we keep our eyes open for tiny, perfect things. So take a look there. You can see there's a little girl and her grandpa going for a walk. And if you look closely, you can see some of the tiny things that they're gonna see on their walk today. like here on the ground, a yellow leaf that the wind blew down. So take a look, can you see some tiny little things in the picture? You can see what, and there's the leaf that they found right there, tiny little leaf on the ground. A spider's web that caught the light. Spiders are also really great animals. They keep, also keep the insects under control. So take a look, do you see the spider web? Isn't that cool? You see any other little tiny creatures in there? I think I spot a butterfly. A snail that climbed the fence last night. So you can see the snail. Do you see the snail on the fence right up here? I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see, there it is, there's the snail, but there's other small things all around us. Oh, look, there's a cat on the fence. <laughs> see all the crows up in this tree? I watch them and they watch me. So I see the crows in my neighborhood, I bet you do too. They're everywhere in San Diego. This is a really great picture. Take a look. Do you see the crows? And look in their nest. Do you see what they have up there in their nest? All kinds of things. Did you know crows like to collect shiny things and anything that catches their eye like a key or a bottle? So here's a red bottle cap and a flower growing through a sidewalk crack and a man with a beautiful feather in his hat. So all kinds of little tiny things. See that red bottle cap? And then we're gonna take a look at the little girl. Oh, looks like there's a dog running, going for a walk. And then look really close. You can see sometimes the plants do grow up through the cracks in the sidewalk, don't they? And there's that feather in his cap. Look, our shadows are holding hands. They walk when we walk and they stand when we stand. Look at all the flowers. And there's the shadows. Do you see what's this up here? Do you see that? That looks like a little bit like a spider, but it's the sun showing those shadows right there. I see a cat on the steps and someone we know. Let's wave hello. Do you ever see somebody you know on your walk and wave hello? I do. Here's an apple way up high, red against the blue, blue sky. So take a look there, look at the apple. It's almost apple season. Maybe a couple more months, we'll get to see apples somewhere. Do you know someone who has an apple tree in their yard? And now I see the pale, bright moon. So there they are walking along. 
May you see the moon. It's getting cold. Let's go home soon. Around the corner up the stairs, the light is on. Who's waiting there? So there they go up to the house. Who's waiting for them in the house? Can you see who is that? That looks like a a cat, maybe do you have a cat or a dog at your, at your house who's waiting for you? We found so many things today, a leaf, a snail, a cat, some crows. Look how excited she is. The world is full of wonders, no matter where we go. Can we go again tomorrow? Oh, and I like that what she's doing. Do you see what she's doing? She's drawing some pictures of things that she's seen on her walk. I wonder what we'll see. The world is full of perfect things when you come and look with me. So there's some of all the beautiful things that they saw on their walk. Did you spy those in the story while we were reading it? And then this book has a special view. It's really long. Let's see if we can get it all in here. How many tiny perfect things can you find? So great thing about San Diego, you can get out there and take a look. What kind of tiny perfect things can you find on your walk? Oh, Miss Rosie, I love all those tiny, perfect little things. Isn't that a great book, Miss Lauren? I loved it. Great book. Mm -hmm. It's so, good. You want to go take a walk? Yeah, you want to go take a walk. You get to see all kinds of things. One of the things I love is spiders. I love spiders too, right? So I, I made a craft, Lauren. Look <gasps> at this craft. Isn't oh my it cool? It's just a paper plate. And then we punched holes around the outside and, and some oh. yarn. It could be string or whatever. I love it. And then we added, just glued on a couple of little plastic mm -hmm. spiders. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's very cute. Oh, I love it. If yeah. you don't like spiders. Yeah, if you don't like spiders, you could do a grasshopper, maybe. I don't know, but it doesn't work with the web. <laughs> we don't want grasshoppers to get caught in the web, but yeah. spiders are really good, too. I mean, this is a really fun craft, so I, yeah. I isn't that fun? And paper plates. You can make a craft out of any, <laughs> any kind of craft out of paper plates, so. I love a paper plate craft. Yeah. And do you have another story for us? I do. This one is a, a, a little bit different, but again, about getting outside and walking in your neighborhood. This one is called Finding Wild. Ooh, a little bit exciting. different book. This, and this is written by Megan Warner Lloyd, or Wagner, excuse me, Megan Wagner Lloyd, and pictures by Abigail Halpin. I love the pictures on this one. Look how bright all the pictures are. Isn't that cool? So... Take a look. What is wild and where can you find it? So what do you guys think? Where do things, everybody thinks that we have to go up into the forest or out where there's no buildings. Maybe. What is wild? Where do you find it? Wild is tiny and fragile and sweet baby new. It pushes through cracks and crannies and steals back forgotten places. So that's wild will find a place to grow whenever you want to, wherever it can sometimes wild is so tricky you have to squint to see it and then there are times when you can't possibly miss it so miss lauren talked about that wild being or biodiversity being those teeny tiny things and sometimes it's really big Wild creeps and crawls and slithers, it leaps and pounces and shows its teeth.
wild is full of smells. Fresh mint, ancient cave, sun-baked desert, sharp pine, salt sea, every scent begging for you to take it in. That's a really interesting way to discover wild. What kind of smells do you smell out there? When you go to the beach, what do you smell? When you go, one of my favorite smells is when you mow the lawn, that, that smell of, of fresh mown grass or maybe a beautiful flower. Wild is forest fire hot and icicle cold. So there's some different ways to experience wild. How does it feel like? It's as smooth as the petals of poppies and as rough as the fierce face of a mountain. So you can take a look and find what's kind of, can you find something soft and maybe something rough in your yard or on a walk? Watch out, wild can hurt. Itch, burn, ouch, sting. So there are some things out there in the wild that we shouldn't touch, right? So we don't, we want to, if we see a bee, we don't want to get stung by that bee, right? And there's certain kinds of plants that'll make us itch. So we do have to be careful. Wild wants us to leave it alone sometimes, right? But wild can also soothe. Gentle breeze, cheering sun, soft rain. Wild keeps many secrets waiting to be discovered. It's like candy, honey from bees and sap from trees, swift melting snowflakes, and juice bursting blackberries. See, so even wild can taste good too, right? You see that? Wild roars and barks and hisses and brays. It's storm thunders and wind whispers. Wild sings. Lots of different kinds of noises, thunderstorms, wind howling through the trees. Sometimes wild is buried too deep and it seems like the whole wide world is clean and paved, orderly, ordered and tidy. So there's their wild, but I know sometimes we live someplace and it doesn't look like there is any wild, right? You look and look and all you can see are streets and cars and buildings so high, they block the sky. And then, just when you're about to give up, there, what do you think is going to happen? There it is again. What are they going to see? There it is again. Old and worn, still standing strong. wild. That's that story, but the, this last picture is really nice. It kind of shows that intersection between where we live and where all the wild things, where wild things can grow, right? So it's a really fun way to think about Wild can be everywhere. Just any in a city, you can see a bird or a spider. Wild is everywhere. So I hope you all can get a chance to go out and find some of the wild things out there. Um, and I know we're trying to use iNaturalist to take some pictures of those things. So, um, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. <laughs> I was looking up our author and title of our last book. I'm going to share it. Oh, yeah. Finding Wild. Megan Wagner Lloyd. Pictures and by Abigail Halpin. 
both of these pictures are, it's hard to show how beautiful all these illustrations are yeah. on, on camera, but if you get a chance to see these books, I think they're really, really inspiring. Get outside and you can find wild everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah, I love that. I love in that book that it's, it's right there. It's easy to, to forget, but it's right here with us, even in our homes. Yes. <laughs> Um, and the other book that you read, Tiny Birth Perfect Things? Tiny so. Perfect Things. Yeah, this one is written by M.H. Clark and illustrated by Madeline Clopper. Yeah, they're both really beautiful. Really beautiful illustrations and um, just lots of details, hard to show. But, you know, if you get a chance to get either one of these books and take a look at them, maybe check them out from the library even. I'm sure there's some, they're out there too. So um, all of our friends at the libraries are, would really like to see kids checking out books right now, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Definitely. And can you show us your um, spider web again? I just, yeah. To see, how did you fasten it on the back? So I just used a little bit of tape. Can you see the little bit of tape uh -huh. right there? So I used a little tape and then another one down over here, um, just kind of crisscross. And the, I think the other thing is to go, you use, use the holes more than once, right? So I've got three strings going to one hole to kind of crisscross it and make it look like a spider web. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be any pattern either. You could just do make do it however you want. I think that's the fun part of it. Mm -hmm. If you don't like purple and yellow, you could do red and green or black, you know, yeah. <laughs> whatever color you have. Um, just mm -hmm. have some fun with it. it. It's really great. So Yeah, it's very cute. And the spiders are out right now. The spiders are out. Fort Weaver webs in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> they keep surprising me. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing with us. This yeah. It was really great to have you, and those are beautiful books. Well, thank you. Yeah, there's lots of really great books out there about wild things. Um, people, you know, they, I think, well, illustrators really have done a nice job of showing kids what it is like outside. Um, and then like in the first book, you know, crows. I don't, people don't think of crows as a wild thing because they're right. everywhere and they're right there in front of our face all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're definitely wild things. They're wild, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're very and, interesting too. Yeah. <laughs> they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. And, and, and wow. going on, I really want to encourage all the kids out there, getting outside right now especially is really important. Get outside, mm -hmm. go for a walk. Look for those tiny perfect things. Look for something that's wild. Um, and maybe draw a picture. I think that the one book where she drew a picture at the end was really nice. She was drawing pictures of all the, the little girl was drawing pictures of all the things that she saw. Mm -hmm. um, that would be great. I'd love to see if anybody would drew a picture of something they saw on a walk Ooh. and would want to post it on yeah. Facebook. I would love to see that. That would be really cool. Um, that would be really cool. You can tag us at the net in it. Mm -hmm. I want to see what you guys are out there exploring. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. But stay safe, like you said, Miss Lauren. You know we have to be safe and don't touch anything. We don't know what to what it is, and uh, making sure that we go with a grown up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So making sure that we're being careful, but having mm -hmm. fun. Yes, wearing our masks if we're going to be by mm -hmm. people and outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but there's still a lot of fun things to explore, even right around your house too. So. Mm -hmm. In your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you, I found a spider in my house. It had a little, um, it made a little spider web in the corner of my house. And I just left it there. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, I just love watching spiders. I think they're fascinating. So yeah, they're pretty beautiful. Once you get over the fear factor. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I do know a lot of people who are afraid of, of spiders, but mm -hmm. um, lizards, those are my thing. I don't like lizards. So oh, no, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And you probably have a lot, too, where you are, I mm -hmm. imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of lizards, but um, yeah, when I was a kid, and I think, you know, you know, it's all about exposure, right? I just never was around lizards. And so now, you know, we have the living lab at the museum mm -hmm. um, and Miss Stacy, who takes care of all the animals, she's constantly like, come over here, Rosie, take a look. She's trying to get me 
to like yeah. them and I'm getting better with it. I think that's, you know, we have to face those fears a little bit. And, that's good. That's you know. great. Yeah. I used to be very scared of, very scared of spiders, love them, but scared of them until I worked, started working at the net and I had to feed a tarantula and that I had to, I had to get over my fear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It happens. Tarantula. See, I love spiders, but you know, everybody's got their something that the, the it's like a creepy crawly thing, I think, that they don't like. But my favorite thing is to show kids that creepy crawly things, they're just they're just as important and, and wonderful as even the cute little bunny, right? We need right. we need snakes and lizards and we, we need, need bunnies too. and yeah. Very important jobs. And later, um, so this morning, Miss Ashton will actually show us how to make a, a house for insects and spiders and so we can encourage them and give them a place to thrive. Yeah, and take a good look, close up look of them, right? They're so fascinating and uh, so unlike everything else that we normally see. So, yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you, Miss Rosie. It was yeah, so lovely thank to you. read and share with us. Thank you, Miss Lauren. And then at the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the stories. And yeah. um, story time is now the first and third Thursdays at 1015 on Facebook so, or Instagram and on YouTube. We have a, a couple different places. So I hope you, if you enjoyed the story, I hope you find the, um, the recordings on Facebook. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Miss Rosie.